Good morning, Survivors, and happy Monday. Oh, it's a beautiful day today. Yes, it's cold, but hey, it's going to be worth it, I think, because it's beautiful and sunny, and hey, we all have jackets, right? <laughs> Some of y'all aren't where it's cold today, but it's not what I'm talking about. What I'm here to talk about today is how it is that narcissists are so effective at making us feel terrible about ourselves and um, how we can get through that. And as I continue on um, this week, I will be doing a few more of our bringing sexy back videos uh, that we've talked about. I've got a really, really cool one coming for the ladies. And if y'all like that, I might do one for the guys too, um, which is, it's a bunch of different guys that I've um, had tell me, um, and I'm still waiting on a couple of submissions, but um, I I've talked with a bunch of different guys and they've told me what they find sexy and what, you know, in a woman. So I would also like to do one of these for men, where it's from women to men. And I'd also like to do one for Maybe, well, we'll get to all that. But anyway, um, I've had a few questions that I want to answer this week about that exact topic. And so I thought I'd start out today with why narcissists destroy us, um, our self-esteem, and, and how that actually works, what they do to do it. And, and like I said, we're going to talk about how we can move past that. All right, so let's do it. Mm. So we all know that when we first meet a narcissist, a lot of times it's amazing. It feels just freaking amazing. Like they're just our soulmate. So it's amazing. It feels amazing. And then when we get to the place where, uh, you know, they, they have grown, grown weary of our, ourselves and, and they've stopped um, thinking we're amazing because maybe they've uh, grown bored with us or they've found something else to look at or think about, some new source of supply, well, then they begin the devalue phase, right? And either that's because we're not giving them enough supply or because they've taken us, started to take us for granted, right? So then they begin to systematically destroy our self-esteem. And I think that this happens because, of course, someone who isn't secure in herself or himself is someone who's easier to control and easier to manipulate, you know? So that's why they do it. But how do they do it? Let's talk about that. So they have this way of being very malicious, but sometimes it's very sneaky. And people who don't know them well often won't see it and they'll think you're the crazy one and that's exactly what the narcissist wants them to think. Smear campaign, etc., right? But what about, you know, the the private moments? How do they do that? Well, we know what they do. They they slowly and systematically um eke out uh, they 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 push first at the parts that they know will hurt you which you told them in the beginning of your relationship without even realizing it. You know, those hours long talks you had, um, maybe they were on the phone, maybe they were on the internet, maybe they were in person, depending on your age and location. Um, those hours long talks that you had at the beginning of your relationship, at some point you probably shared with them your fears and the things that have hurt you in your life and things like that. And well, it seems like, oh my God, this is such an amazing connection. And they might've even cried with you when you told them all the horrible things that you've been through. Um, in some cases that really happens um, <laughs> when they get past the point of being enamored with you and and uh, feeling that love bombing feeling that they have or the the infatuation that they have um, well then they oh yeah I just remembered she you know had this horrible experience or that horrible experience or he just had this horrible experience or that you know so they when you know the chips are down that's when they'll they'll strike in the places that that they know will hurt you the most so, for example, let's say that you met the narcissist and in the beginning of your relationship, the narcissist focused on what was so attractive about you physically, right? And let's say that you've been together a few years or a few months and some of the physical things have changed. Maybe you've had a baby, maybe you have, um, you know, lost, lost weight, gained weight, um, maybe you look older than you used to look or whatever, and then they will begin to systematically destroy you one hidden insult at a time. Well, you know, some of them are very sneaky with their insults and some of them are not so sneaky. Some of them will just be like, damn, you're fat. Damn, you're unattractive. What happened to the girl I married before? What happened to the guy that I used to know? You know, um, and that's terrible and painful, right? And so with, and then some of them will say things like, you know, gosh, I, you know, I can't quite fit my arms around you like I used to or whatever. I mean, this is just a one example, the, the, you know, um, the, the change in appearance, but this is something that I hear from a lot of my reader, readers, viewers, clients, all of y'all uh, tell me that 
the narcissist has often gone so far as to destroy your your self-esteem in regard to your physical appearance. So that's why this week we're going to be talking about this stuff, all right? So a lot of times, um, you know, they're looking for their own validation in this process. So, you know, they've come to depend on you for love and care and all this stuff. And so let's say you get busy, you know, we, we let's, let's go back to that baby example that we kind of used earlier. You know, when you have a baby, a lot of time, even if it's the narcissist baby, a lot of times they will feel very jealous of the attention that you put on the baby. And this is true, even if it's, you know, the narcissist is the mother, uh, but especially if they're the father, um, they will feel jealous of the attention that their partner is putting on their own child. And then they will gaslight and abuse the, uh, you know, their partner in order to gain more attention. So it's all manipulation. And, and in some cases, um, you know, they, they actually cause the partner to show less attention to their child. And that's not fair. So to the child, not to move to the partner. So you have to figure out a way to be, to continue to be yourself and not um, put the narcissist needs before your own, and especially not before your child's. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure most of you don't do that, but, but it's happened. It's happened to people. And, and the narcissist is so good at manipulating people that they sometimes, you know, it's, it gets bad. I'm just going to stop right there. It gets bad. You have to remember, and it sucks, but the reason the narcissist targeted you in the first place is because they, they could see very soon, very early that you didn't have strong boundaries and that you wouldn't enforce them and that you would continually, you would continually look at the narcissist for approval. And maybe that's because of the way you were raised and maybe that's because of something else. But regardless of that, the narcissist sees that in you very early. And that's why they choose you in part. They also choose you because you're attractive and intelligent and they can, you know, you could be on their arm and that makes it okay for them. But again, as life goes on and you change and things are different, the narcissist will definitely not be okay with it and will make your life harder. So, yeah, uh, it comes down to the fact that narcissists choose us because we are vulnerable to them in some way and they know it. And they use, like I said before, they use those heart-to-heart -heart talks that you first have in the beginning of the relationship to find out what your fears are. And when, when they run out of using those and then you get over all that stuff, well, then they'll sometimes keep throwing them back in your face for the whole relationship. And other times they'll, you know, look for new stuff to find, to, to pick on you about. So it's just an ongoing process. So, you know, obviously the best solution to dealing with a narcissist is always to go no contact. But in cases where you can't go no contact, what do you, you know, you, you still need to work on your self-esteem because the better you feel, the more chances you have of actually realizing that you're worth way more than that and that you deserve better. Um, but even when you've already gone through the narcissistic abuse, you still might find yourself feeling ugly and unattractive and, and feeling like you don't even deserve to find someone new that loves you and treats you the way you deserve to be treated. So we're going to talk about that this week, right? So get ready, y'all. We're going to do it. Um, so in an effort to take back your life, um, you know, one of the things that I did in my own abuse and one of the things that, um, you know, and in my abuse recovery even more so, uh, and, and one of the things that a lot of us can do is, is to begin to change our external appearance back to something that we feel good about and begin to care about it again, because depending on the, the nature of the narcissist, we, we may have felt that we needed to change our looks because they felt threatened by them. Or we may have felt that, you know, um, so in some cases the narcissist will, who are you trying to look good for? If you try to do anything outside of your usual nothing, <laughs> uh, you know, and even if they don't go that route, they often will bring you, um, pain with other issues. So between the gaslighting and the excessive, um, uh, mistreatment of you it's it's just almost impossible for you to maintain a sense of self-esteem unless you're intentionally doing so and like i said in the relationship out of the relationship regardless it can affect you for the rest of your life so this week um, as part of our soul staycation that's what we're doing we're going to work on making our appearance pleasing to us and making us feel good about ourselves again outside and then we're going to carry that all the way in to the inside. Okay. So let's do that. Another thing narcissists will do to destroy your self-esteem is they will question everything you say and they will tell you things like, Oh, you're too sensitive and you're too, 
you know, you're too wishy-washy and you care too much and you, you care too little and, you know, they'll just, essentially whatever you're doing or saying, they will do or say the opposite of that and tear you apart. Another thing they might do is, um, you know, for example, uh, if uh, in the case of male narcissists, they may be looking at things on the internet that are inappropriate for people to be looking at when they're married or in relationships, and they may do so blatantly and without concern for your feelings. Uh, so, for example, in my previous marriage, there was a time when I had a physical problem uh, that I had to go to the hospital and have a surgery for, and when I came home um, to the narcissist at the time, I found the narcissist doing things that I felt very uncomfortable about considering my situation. And I'm just going to leave it at that. It's, it's, it's the P word, y'all. It's porn. No good. We'll tell you that that's normal and it's healthy for you to do that and for, for that to happen, but that's not always the case. So it's only normal and healthy when it doesn't um, replace actual intimacy. Feel me. Narcissists will also instigate uh, confrontation between you and other people. And they kind of do this in the form of smear campaigns. And sometimes they'll, like, if you come home and, you know, from an event or something and you're like, oh, my gosh, this person said this and it was kind of weird, but I think it's okay. They will kind of, kind of, un instinct, like, uh, they'll kind of go under under the radar and, and they'll seem like they're supporting you, but actually they're they're kind of cementing your insecurity in that situation with the things that they say. Does that make any sense? Um, yeah. So they're always looking for ways to, to take you down a notch, to make sure that they have some control over you and your situation. And that is exactly their goal. Because once, once you feel bad about yourself, you have no reason to walk away from them because they've convinced you a lot of times that nobody else would want you or put up with you anyway. Feel me? And now it's time for Sophie's tip of the day. One way to feel good about yourself is to know that um, nobody's perfect and you can be perfect in your own way. That's right. Thank you. So if you have questions that I can help you with, um, with as far as feeling good about yourself or changing your attitude about yourself, I, I think the ultimate goal of, of this week will be to you know, when I say bringing sexy back, I don't mean just, you know, being hot. I mean, hotness is awesome and all that stuff, of course, but there's so much more than that because sexy is really a state of mind and it's a, it's a confidence and it's a strength that a lot of people have, but don't always realize they have. I think everybody has a little sexy, right? So we're going to focus on that. We're going to focus on bringing back the inner strength that we all need and also on some basic beauty stuff. Um, I'm not a beauty guru. I will not be doing beauty guru stuff, but I will answer specific questions people have asked me about this, and I will explain my basic stuff, and then we'll go into the, like, the psychology of all of it and why it works. It's going to be a fun week, you guys, so stay tuned for that, all right? I don't know. I know this video was a little bit all over the place today, <laughs> but uh, happy Monday. I've only had one cup of coffee. I'm about to have another one, so let's see how that goes. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon later today for another video. Um, my schedule is crazy packed, so might be a little late, but it'll be here. All right. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. And as always, thanks for letting me be a part of your life. And thanks for being a part of mine.